Welcome back to Between the Lines. Our guest today is Dr. Gilbert Valentine. He is the author of this book, W. W. Prescott. It's a study on the life of a man who was a pioneer in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the thing that's significant about that is how he was a part of helping to formulate the thought and the schools and the things of that nature. But he transitioned between two great centuries, the 19th century and the 20th century. It's true. But there's some things that we were just talking about off air that I really want to go back to. And you talked about his father lived through a very important time in prophetic history mm -hmm. that's outlined in Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. His father um, heard William Miller preaching and became part of that Advent awakening in the 1830s and 40s. In fact, uh, his father had left uh, potatoes in the field when they were expecting uh, the advent of Jesus. And so he went through the great disappointment. I think his father also was awake and was taken out by his parents to see the falling stars in, in 1833. So they had strong links with this early advent hope and this expectation that, that Jesus would come. But these were not just New Englanders who were caught up in a particular movement. They actually had religious roots, as you were sharing with us. And, and that, that, that root uh, yeah. or historical or ancestry took them back to England. Like give, give us some insight Prescott's in that. Prescott's forebears um, were part of the, the pilgrim movement in, in the early development of, of American history and beyond that back to, to England. So it was a family that had deep roots in, in the soil of America and they had been devout people, had people of hope and people of faith all the way through. What do, what do you think made it so so prominent in that time for people to be so committed because you use the word fervor it's not a word yes. that's that's commonly used today about people's no. commitment to to God they took scripture seriously they faced many hardships in life um, there, were, there was sickness and illness around and and so they were much more aware of the need for for God's presence and and for for faith as the the kind of core of, of their life, mm -hmm. the anchor for, the, for their experience. Right. Certainly that background shaped him, Prescott into the man he became. Mm. Tell us some of the other exceptional things about Prescott that you discovered as you were researching his life. Yeah. Prescott, over the years, became a very powerful preacher, became very strongly convicted that Christ should be the center of, of all that we do. And, and he became a, a <coughs> preacher of the gospel in a very powerful way. Um, for example, in, in Australia, when he was visiting there on one occasion in the 1890s with Ellen White, um, he was so effective in his preaching of the gospel in, in a new, fresh way that uh, Mrs. White thought that, that uh, she could recognize um, that God was moving with him in a very special way. But he also had a very powerful voice, um, very deep, resonant voice and was appreciated as a preacher. In fact, HMS Richards tells the story on one occasion in 1905, I think it was here in, in Washington. They were attending a big convention and they were all under this canvas and it started to rain very heavily. And the, the little preacher at the desk was drowned out completely, couldn't make himself heard above the, the noise of this torrential downpour. So Richard says there were voices that began to come from the, the audience. Prescott, Prescott, where's Prescott? And they located him and asked him to come up on the, the platform and he translated for this low-voiced preacher who couldn't make himself heard. Oh. Didn't translate across languages but just took what the preacher said and with his big booming voice in the days before PA systems and uh, audio-visual equipment was able to make this little preacher heard. So That's he, a true preacher. He, <laughs> he had quite an impact on his audience. Hmm. And his preaching was, was filled with scripture. So he was appreciated a great deal. Do we know much about his wife? Because you, you have pictures of her in the yeah, book. Yeah, she was a teacher um, who helped Prescott. She also came from a very important New England family. Um, but she stayed by his side all those, those years. She, she died of cancer uh, in 1910 when he was just... 55 years of age, so a lot of sorrow and a lot of heartache. So he had to, he had to bury time. a son. A son. He buried his wife. Buried his wife. Yep. 
it's wow. he, because he did so much. Did you pick up what he most wanted to be perceived as a theologian, a preacher, an educator? What was what did he no. consider himself first and foremost? He was a, considered as a resident theologian in the church. He had deep learning and was able to understand things um, at a deep level. But I think the thing that he is remembered for and would and wanted to be remembered for was his proclamation of Jesus, building a, a relationship with Jesus for himself and helping other people to develop that close, personal, living faith in Jesus. Where did he spend most of his life? Most of his later life was spent here in Washington, D.C. In this area? Yeah. Prior to that, he was living in Battle Creek. Prior to that, he was a newspaper publisher up in Maine. Um, he worked for a little time in England. He was the leader of the church in Britain. But for the period from 1901 right through to when he finished, 1944, he uh, lived here in Washington, but traveled the world. And we thought we did a lot. This yeah. is a man of many yeah. trades. Yeah. No question about that. I'm getting tired just I, thinking about Well, you know, I want to go life. back to the part where he was managing three colleges simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, what were those three colleges? Walla Walla College. He was the founding president for Walla Walla. He was the founding president for Union College. And he was the president of Battle Creek College in Battle Creek. Now, he had good principles, uh, principles who were principles of the college, good principles of life himself, right. of, of course. But he relied on, on good principles in the colleges, so he was able to delegate responsibility. But... Uh, it was a time when, when he was developing a system in the church for education, and uh, so he superintended those colleges, served as president of each of them, as well as the first superintendent of education for the world church. Well, Dr. Valentine, we're going to take a break, and when we yeah. come back, we want to talk about how people received this man of multiple talents uh -huh. who just had this zealous energy, this just yeah. fervor for seeing God's work go forward. Stay with us. You're watching Between the Lines. For more information about any of the books presented today on Between the Lines, visit your local Adventist Book Center or go online at www.adventistbookcenter.com. If you're interested in receiving a copy of today's book and live in the United States and Canada, call 1-800-765-6955. Again, that's 1-800-765-6955.